Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Hey, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live at DockerCon 2015 in downtown San Francisco. We've been here for uh, two days, back-to-back -back coverage, going out to the events, extracting the signal from the noise, finding cool people with great stories that we can bring on the air and share their stories with you. And we're really excited about this next segment. I'm joined by my co-host, Brian Gracely. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, host of the Cloudcast. And, uh, and our special guest all the way from the Netherlands, right? Not Amsterdam, the Netherlands, is uh, Eric Felixic and he is the great title, Director of the Cloud Orchestra, not Director of Orchestration, uh, of Nerdalize. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Jeff, thanks for having me. So you guys have a really interesting product, a really interesting story for the folks that missed the keynotes. Tell us a little bit about what Nerdalize is all about. Yeah, let me explain you a few things about our business. We're uh, doing uh, uh, two things at the, at the moment. Uh, on one hand, we are offering uh, free heating to residential uh, uh, homeowners, and on the other hand, at the same time, we're offering uh, compute capacity, infrastructure as a service, uh, below market prices. To? Uh, to uh, commercial uh, and uh, researchers, uh, okay. uh, users of, of infrastructure as okay. a service, uh, that want to do uh, compute and that care about uh, the, the price performance ratio. Uh, so we're actually competing on price, which is uh, uh, actually very, uh, very interesting uh, because uh, uh, we can do this because of, of the combination of these two markets. So everyone now is jumping on the internet to try to figure out how do those two things tie together. And really it's a pretty ingenious um, bringing together of two very different things. You basically are piecing out data centers and sticking those pieces in homes. Is yes, that, is that yes. accurate? So we're actually... Um, we have built uh, a radiator that uh, can actually contain Xeon-based uh, server motherboards. Uh, so we're actually physically placing these motherboards in a heater and we're distributing these heaters uh, through the Netherlands. So they, uh, they compose together a uh, massive computational infrastructure. So it's a heater first with computation and store attached? Uh, well, the thing is, it's a heater for uh, one side of the market, right. uh, and it's a cooler for us, so we can actually offer computation to other parties. But is there actually a heat, if, it's, if, it's, uh, if there's no computation going on, for some reason everybody's out, uh, out tonight, well, is, there, is there actual a heater, or are you just using the heating from the, from the, uh, the compute No, we're resources? using the, the, the processors as the heater. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. The, 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 the thing is like this, if you look on the, on the heating side of the market, the, the regular way of heating is a giant waste. There is, uh, at least in Europe, I don't know about the US, but in Europe 40% of the primary energy is spent on heating because it's a necessity. Right. If you don't heat your house, you're going to die, you know? Right. Right. Uh, but the way we, we generate this heat is just uh, very polluting uh, and it's a waste. But if you see that uh, the data center market is now using 5% of the worldwide energy uh, electricity, uh, from electricity, 5%, that's an incredible lot, right? right. And this is all 100% converted to heat. Right. And this right. is in the way in the data center. So right. this is giving right. them a bit ha big headache. And we're solving this problem by combining these models and cutting a lot back on infrastructure. Right, because they're costs. also spending money on cooling. Not only are they generating heat, but then they're spending more they're energy spending dollars on cooling. On cooling. Yeah. If you're talking about cooling, by the way, you got to know that uh, the, the average power usage efficiency is 1.7 for data centers. This means it's 70% overhead on top of the, the regular uh, energy you use actually for your server. And 70% is a lot. I have more innovative uh, ways of doing that these days, and right. the, the market leaders are at 20%, uh, maybe even lower, but we're at 6%, that's 1.06. Uh, and that is actually, uh, um, that is very unique. Yeah, no, that's incredible. I mean, that's, that's lower than you see, you know, Facebook and Google talk about 1.2 or 1.3, like 1. Point, that's 6% that's loss, that's yeah. incredibly efficient. So, I mean, you guys in essence are, uh, tell me if this analogy is wrong. I mean, you guys are kind of the the Uber for taking taking heat out of data centers, and you're putting it in places where people need heat. You're That's what we hear a lot. Existing resources. Yeah. The thing, if you if you talk about uh, Uber and uh, Airbnb, for example, uh, I think uh, the main uh, reason they're successful uh, is that they are combining uh, existing uh, models and they're more ef efficiently 
uh, using existing assets. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. And the stuff where we, you know, the, the stuff that costs a lot is assets in this world, right? You have services, you have, ass you have assets, and we're reusing the, the roofs and the, the fiber optics infrastructure that is abundant in the Netherlands. Uh, and we're, we're reusing the available electricity grid that is uh, excellent. Uh, and we're using all these facilities uh, to offer sort of the Airbnb for data centers. But then the other thing, because you often hear about the data centers, right? Google and Facebook that, that run big ones. They're constantly looking for ways to be more efficient. But, but and, and sticking it next to maybe a commercial building, you know, is easy logic. But you're taking it to a whole nother step. Not putting a big data center next to a big commercial building that needs the heat. You're breaking it up into little bits and pieces. So yeah. managing this dist you know, distributed infrastructure, a whole nother kind of layer of, of, uh, of challenge that you guys have taken on. Yeah, it's super exciting. It's not for the timid, the, the game we're playing. Uh, and we want uh, we want to be bold and we want to uh, to do something radical. Uh, so if you look at the, the, the way we now distribute the heaters, uh, from a logistics uh, perspective, we're partnering with uh, uh, Eneco, which is the second largest energy provider uh, of the Netherlands. Uh, and they're doing the logistics for us. Uh, so that helps us a lot. Uh, and it's more efficient to put it actually in the heat from a heat uh, or in the home uh, from a heating perspective, right? Uh, because uh, if you are actually transporting heat, uh, you're going to be very inefficient. Right. And right. that's the problem that the current approaches deal with uh, right. is the inefficiency of uh, transporting heat over long distances. Okay, so in essence, Nerdalize, fundamentally, you guys are a software company. You're, you're solving a distributed problem. That's that, that's got to be why you're here as sort of a, a core customer use case for Docker, right? Well, distributed technology, distributed business model. The thing is, are we a software company or are we a hardware company? The the um, we're, we're for sure a hardware company because okay. we're in the business of cooling hardware. Uh, and we are heavily investing in this technology and we actually employ uh, aerospace engineers because they can make all kinds of custom parts, you know, from yeah. metal. We do a lot of stuff that if it falls, you, you hurt your foot, you know? Uh, that's that's <laughs> the stuff we're in. Uh, and uh, we have uh, actually a rocket scientist because he's super knowledgeable about heat dissipation and uh, uh, modeling this stuff. Uh, so there is a lot of innovation we're doing in that field. Uh, and at the same point, uh, we're also having partnerships uh, because there is a lot of uh, work to be done on uh, getting in the right partners to 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 pull this yeah. to the right uh, level. And how did you get here? Where did you? Which which part of the problem were you trying to tackle? For you decided, No, no, no. Just for your business. Um, yeah, what's, uh, what's your business journey? How did you, yeah, guys how did you yeah. get started? The thing is, we yeah. have uh, uh, we have a CEO, and he's gonna hate me for this, but he's the guy who uh, breaks the physical stuff, you know. Right, right. So um, uh, he once uh, broke the, the the thermostat in his house. Okay. Uh, he's a great guy, but uh, he broke this, and he was like, "Oh, what do we not do now?" Because he was renovating his house, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then our current uh, CTO uh, uh, had uh, they had a very cold uh, uh, winter. Uh, and he had this uh, laptop. So he was sort of hugging this laptop <laughs> to stay warm, and they had blankets We've and stuff. We've all been there. We had a laptop on our lap, and it gets too hot. Right? Yeah. Right. So it's there. It's but there. he was actually appreciating this heat, right? Yeah. So he said, let's go to Dell.com, let's order 100 of them, and we will have nerd heat, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's, that's where the name also yeah. come from. Well, it's uh, it's and, it's and this is how the idea came about. So you do some you know, back of the envelope calculations, seem to make sense, uh, and later you learn it does actually make sense, uh, for for more reasons than you even initially uh, expected, yeah. and that's a surprising uh, that's a surprising but really really great thing. And then how bit just give people a, a feel for the scale of the company. How big are you? How long have you been around? How many of these devices are out in the field? Yeah, so uh, we're uh, three years in the running now. Okay. Uh, uh, we're about uh, twelve people. Okay. Uh, and we have uh, recently closed a deal with uh, Ineco, so uh, they're one of the the investors in the Netherlands. Uh, and we're uh, uh, we're placing devices in the field uh, in uh, cooperation with them. Now, if you're if you're in hardware, you gotta be careful because there's a, a sort of slower iteration cycle than uh, with software. We have five in the field now, uh -huh. operating uh, very well, and the customers love it. So uh, it's good. Yeah. It's interesting. The last show I was on with John, we were talking about sort of where does hardware go because everyone talks about commodity hardware. I think in the data center, yeah, uh, hardware is becoming commoditized, but 
essentially he's he's doing an Internet of Things type of application. There's opportunity to innovate around hardware because you know unique designs, unique design patterns. Uh, there's still innovation around hardware. You talked about that. There's a lot of innovation in cooling technology in the data center. Uh, and if you're looking at hardware as a commodity, uh, I mean we have the. Uh, hardware as a commodity since since early days when we had these third generation languages and compiling stuff. Right. This helped a lot because you wouldn't have to care that much anymore about where you exactly run it. We're out of the mainframe area. Then Google came about and said we're not going to use, uh, for example, SunSpark hardware anymore. Although it's slightly more reliable, it's still not going to fix our problems, you know. Right. We need massive scale, we need even better reliability. So we're going to solve it in software. And that was really innovative. And um, what is uh, really great is that now that you see this whole Docker infrastructure coming about, they're making the, the, the technology that the big guys are using uh, to, to manage uh, their, their applications at scale and to do high availability and that sort of stuff, you see this becoming available to everybody. And now we're about taking the next step. So in, in order to cut costs even forward, further, uh, we say don't only use commodity hardware, but also, and, and software distribution, you know, to cut costs, uh, but also distribute the, the, the physical uh, servers. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I think there's a, there's a parallel here with the way Google decided to, to do right. distribution, uh, because it actually scales better, but it's also more cost effective. Yeah. But, but somebody's going to go, I remember my first data center tour, and it was all about the security, right? The lockdown, and the fingerprint, and the eye scan, sure. and all, all these kind of things. And of course, I ripped open a door and it just popped <laughs> open in my hand, but that's another story. But what, you know, so are there specific applications that work best in your situation? How do you answer the security in kind of the classic data center? Do you have a, a specific set uh, of apps that you're going to market with, or is it really just general purpose computing at a much better economics than you could get from AWS or some other uh, cloud provider? How yeah. are you positioning? From a security perspective, uh, it's important to know that at this point we're uh, offering ephemeral storage, uh, and this is all encrypted. Uh, and we organize it such that um, uh, that the keys we also forget them. You know, it's it's only a memory. Uh, so uh, fr from a data security perspective, uh, there is not much uh, uh, concerns now from uh, from our customers. Uh, and 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 actually at this point we're we're offering um, ephemeral storage uh, because it's it, it fits the model just you just easily at this point. Yeah. Uh, now if you look at um, the the type of applications that we're offering. Um, at this point, we're uh, doing uh, mainly CPU-intensive uh, workloads. Okay. Um, so it is it is sort of a natural fit because you're actually in the business of generating heat, uh, but it's also very much because there's a lot of cost there for you know your your 32 uh, core instance at uh, at the alternative cloud provider is super expensive. Yeah. So if you can actually do like CPU-bound, computationally intensive workloads like your protein folding, uh, uh, bioinformatics is exploding, uh, you have your machine learning, very computationally intensive, uh, you have your uh, geoinformation systems and your video transcoding. There's a lot of stuff going on there that just needs massive compute. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we have seen in the last like 30 years that compute is just very price elastic product, right? As it becomes cheaper, people want more of it. Right, right, uh, right. And that's yeah. why it's uh, good to be offering uh, uh, cheaper. Yeah, and I have, I have to imagine in your business, you know, you guys think about where it goes down the road. You've got the challenge of how do I distribute lots of, of heating units, but on the back end, you guys must be learning a ton about how people consume power, uh, what what sure. patterns look like, that that data, you know, it's a big, becomes a big data problem. Right. That becomes big interesting to the municipalities potentially, becomes yeah. interesting to the power companies. So there's lots of business opportunities as you guys grow, I would assume. Yeah, there is actually, there is, we're on the nexus of a number of uh, industry trends and markets. So we're in uh, the power uh, industry, we're in the heating industry, uh, we're in the uh, glass fiber industry, uh, we're, we're touching uh, uh, with the distributed systems industry. Yeah. Internet of uh, and things, we're, we're all Internet those of things, things yeah. and we're building partnerships such that also the environment can profit a lot. Uh, if it is about the, the, the power, for example, uh, a lot of the people who work at the company have a background also in smart home and smart energy management. So we know a lot about this stuff. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is also reasons, of course, that uh, our partner in ECO is uh, interested in this. Right, right, and, I, and orchestration's going to be a huge thing because what if it's a hot day and I need to run a big job? I mean, how are you a power company first? Are you a computing company first? Well, how do you balance those out? You have, different, you have totally different customers, right? You have a different customer sure. set. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, there's two markets, and this is very confusing for a lot of people. Uh, and uh, actually, the business model is, is from the compute side. So okay. because we're uh, eliminating 60% of data center costs by not having this overhead, we can actually have a more affordable product for uh, compute clients. So that's the real uh, sort of business driver, okay. right? Uh, and uh, what, we're, what we're doing in this space is we're uh, creating products uh, that are uh, aimed at, for example, scientific uh, uh, computations uh, where people don't really care uh, where they run their, their, their software, uh, but they just want a very good price performance. Uh, and that's what we can offer because of structural cost advantages. That's great. So we're here at DockerCon. Let's what talk about DockerCon. Let's, let's talk yeah, about let's why talk about are you that. here. Let's talk about for. Docker. You know, big show, a lot of buzz. You know, really at the front end of, a, of an this exciting time. How do you guys use it? Why is it important to your business? So uh, it's important for a number of reasons. Now, uh, if you look at the talks here, it's really good talks, really smart people, and it's a lot about how to operate your, your software infrastructure smarter, uh, faster, and how to accelerate and innovate here, right? And uh, this helps us a lot. So we're using Docker internally, uh, we're using it to, to, to build software, to, to ship software, to collaborate faster and yeah. smarter. And that's sort of the regular thing, right? Right. Um, as an example, we're building Benchmarker, uh, where we have uh, a method of, of reusing existing tools in the ecosystem, like you have your InfluxDB, your Grafana for monitoring, we're building stuff ourselves, to uh, compare benchmarking results from different providers. At the same moment, uh, we're having Docker as a packaging format is great for us, uh, because we don't have to solve the problem of saying you have AMI images, you have different standards, and now we have some different neuralized format. Uh, we don't do that. We say there is an industry standard, package your stuff in Docker. Ah, yeah, you can for run your, it for your place. customers, right? Because they basically have your yeah. your Docker package. And they we can deploy too. their stuff at Amazon uh, as well okay. because yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazon supports the same format. Right, so right. we can benchmark all these cloud providers and give the customer more transparency of how much their job actually costs at various providers, right? And then turns out that we cut cost by 30 to 55%. But you can so still run the job at another provider if sure. for whatever reason if you don't it's a like really us, hot day yeah. and, and uh, you got to run it someplace else or you're, you're tapped out on capacity. You've got the ability to run it on alternate uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Systems. If you oh, don't like great. us, ditch us. Yeah. I mean, we're we're in the business of uh, offering uh, a solution that is just more affordable, right? Uh, and we like transparency, uh, and we don't like lock-in, right? So it helps us a lot that people, uh, if people have uh, Docker packaged uh, applications, they can migrate to us. And if they decide they want to move away, that's fine because we think we have sufficient uh, grounds to, to, to compete on. Now, you guys now, if it comes to the, the heating, by the way. Uh, we actually solved the problem of the summer days, right? Uh, because you've been mentioning this right, for now, right, and right. It's, it's really interesting. Because it's an interesting matching. It's a different type of optimization yeah. kind of a problem. So I was really looking at, like, we have this incredible challenge uh, of uh, scheduling this stuff, right? Uh, but the cool thing is that we're working with these uh, physical engineers, and they came to me and they say, well, we can actually, uh, you know, transport the heat to another location. So um, the, the thing they solve this is they have uh, the technology to create 50 uh, degrees Celsius hot water. Uh, 50 to 55 degrees is sufficient to do very efficient uh, uh, heating. Uh, and um, uh, this works for us, but we can also pump it uh, and, uh, to other uh, places and uh, for example, ditch the heat in the summer if it's not needed or integrate with your uh, uh, traditional heating systems. There's heat pumps hot, uh, cold storage technologies. So there's a lot of things we can do now that we can actually, um, you know, move the heat from the CPU to hot water. Mm -hmm. And therefore, basically the whole, um, the, the challenge of scheduling this uh, is, is solved. And it will be sort of a optimization later. Yeah. But yeah. That's uh, that's of later concerns oh, is, because I, we're, I, we could go all day, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating. You come to the, <laughs> you come to the community-centric shows. You see when when technology friction goes away, this kind of innovation happens. It's fascinating. Right, right, right. So I give you the last one. We're getting the hook on time, and like I said, we could go all day. What's what's the message to uh, to the folks at home that didn't make it here to the show? What's the vibe? Should they come to uh, DockerCon 2016? Well, DockerCon is great. Uh, the the thing is that what we have seen in the last uh, few days. Uh, Docker is really commoditizing the, the, the infrastructure for the cloud because they're being an abstraction uh, layer on top. 
Uh, it's great for consumers, uh, it's great for people who want to run their stuff uh, because they have more choice. Uh, and what I see is that the cloud market is being uh, uh, more uh, homogenized in the, in the infrastructure layer, so people can actually pick on, uh, on the non-functional aspects of their infrastructure, and it's great for them, and Docker is really helping in this. Great awesome. people, awesome atmosphere. Yeah, great. Good. Again, thanks for stopping by and sharing your uh, stories. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. Thank Q you so much. With Brian Gracely, we're at DockerCon 2015. We will be right back with our next segment after this short break. Thanks for watching.